one of the things that Derek did recently, uh, him and Matt did, does fitness. Yeah. Because last time that we spoke was about two and a half years ago, mm-hmm. a couple of miles in that direction, I think. And we were talking then and all of the, like, is he natural accusations that have followed you since we were in uni, basically oh, yeah. like 15 years ago. And I think that one of the concerns that you'd had then was, well, no matter what test you do, there is always going to be somebody mm-hmm. that says it's insufficient, it's not enough, it's blah, blah, blah. And I think Matt had that problem too. Matt mm-hmm. went to Derek and said, design me the most rigorous randomized testing protocol in the world. Mm-hmm. Is that something that yes. you use? <laughs> I've emailed Derek and I've WhatsApp Derek two months ago. Right? No reply. You're kidding me. <laughs> yeah. You're kidding. Yeah. I'll show you after this. Because I spoke to, obviously I've seen this all happening. I've been watching the videos. I speak to Matt. He's like one of my best friends. Yep. And um, Matt was telling me, because I asked for his number, Matt was saying, uh, just be aware, it's a massive ball ache on both ends because he has to be available to do all these random tests. He's got to pay for it. But then Derek has to do so much organization. You know, he's getting things set up in a country which he doesn't live in. And the whole process, you can't just do all these random tests in a, a week or two weeks. It has to be over a four, five-month period. Yeah. So um, he got on that first, did everything he could have possibly done, and proved that he's not taking anything. There's I still, didn't see – so I saw the announcement of Matt's yeah. thing. I never actually saw the results. Did he get bigger yeah, so and leaner and stronger? And Well, the results, I think, because it, it was all messed up because he tore his Achilles like before, before the testing started playing football. So his, I don't know what he was trying to prove that he could still maintain his lifts or something. Mm. So I think he was able to bring it back, but he was getting tested throughout and there was no funky stuff happening. Okay. But it was interesting because he's making these videos and proving that he's natural. And then there's still people who are like, no, I don't believe you. They're not happy. So why did you, if that's the case, why would you message Derek? If Matt's gone through the most rigorous testing protocol available to man, and that's still not sufficient for some because, people. Because I think there's there's literally nothing more you can do. And if anybody is going to oversee any kind of testing, I would want Derek to do it. Because I'd... Derek, use, pick up the phone. I know. I'll ring him. I'll ring him once we're finished up. I was texting him this morning. I've, I've got the, the email and the WhatsApp. Wow. But I, I'm not going to pester him. To, to give I imagine, him... Imagine how busy he is To now. give him his due, that man is drowning in emails 24-7. Yeah. There was a period to... I'll ask him if I can put this into the podcast. I'm sure you won't have a problem with it, but we can cut it if, if needs be. Uh, after he released the Liver King video, which was, you know, this big crescendo, and then he does Rogan, then he does me, yeah, then he does yeah. Zach. I watched then, them all. He, then he does uh, uh, like a comedy podcast, and then he maybe does one more. And he was like, dude, I'm, I have six months of unanswered emails to deal with because all he'd been doing was grinding, creating content, and then built up to this kind of big crescendo maximum thing. Mm. And then all he's like, what's he released? Like three videos maybe since November, December time, because he's super busy. This is one of the things that, I don't know, people don't really see the pain that goes into creating content like that. Or even for you, it's so effortful to make a fucking vlog. Yeah, the vlogs are long. Dude, it is so painful. And it looks like a a beautiful life. The number one... uh, desired job amongst American children is influencer yeah. now. And I would imagine that, you know, YouTuber would probably get folded into that. There are some amazing parts of the job, but there are some bits that absolutely suck. If mm-hmm. you're sat with your editor the night before it needs to be uploaded, looking at the edit, unhappy with something, giving him amends on frame.io or whatever it is that you're using. Yeah. It's not that much fun. And I think that what you're seeing with Derek is, you know, the fall off on the well, other it's, side. It's the it? same with me. I used to have this really strict schedule where I would have to post at a certain time on a certain day. Yeah. And I would literally be pulling my hair out just to make sure that everything was perfect. Everything was filmed. And when I wasn't, you know, maybe two hours were left before the upload and it wasn't ready, I would be so stressed out. Yeah. And then I just thought it's not even worth it. I was just, just like, remove the schedule I was just and like, post if it's, as if, and when. I'll, it's post it when it's ready. Yeah. Post it a day later, two days later. What do you think, this is an interesting thing, especially given that you've been in the YouTube scene for a very long time, since before, I think before Derek was on YouTube, although he has been on for a long time talking about non-fitness mm. content. Do you think that he has been one of the bigger, biggest influences in kind of shaping fitness YouTube over the last few years? What do you think has sort of improved or I, I think or so in, in terms of education, definitely. Because he's he's like a friggin' encyclopedia. He knows so much. So he's definitely 
he's definitely had a positive impact. I don't know anyone else who's... I think there's a few other people now who are pretty clued up when it comes to... Jeff Nippard, maybe? Yes. He puts a hell of a lot of work into his videos. Yeah. There's another guy. He puts the... I forgot his name. He puts all these um, like uh, re, uh, bands on his muscles. Okay. So it can pick up the twitching of the fibers. And he does all these exercises. Oh, Ryan, and it's Ryan. Ryan something. Okay, what and he and that will determine how much yeah, so uh, he, muscle activation. There yeah, is. yeah, Mo- muscle activation doing different exercises. I've never seen it before, and I watched a few of his videos, and he's ve- he's very uh, charismatic, charismatic, and entertaining. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, I. So, what would you the the trend when you started YouTube? Uh, you know, when I, I'm, I I think I was I was lucky because I was early. Yes, I would agree. You know that Rob Lipset, like Harrison mm. Twins kind of era ish. Mm-hmm. I think was a. You know, it was a golden era for like bro content, vlogs, lifestyle, lifting. Mm. To me now, and I'm outside of that, uh, whatever, like cohort of delivery on YouTube in any case. But for me, it it really feels like the um, evidence-based, you know, sort of more yeah. scientific approach to education. I'm sure that there still are big lifestyle channels out there, but like I don't see... Your, your Jeff sides of the world, your David Lades of the world, mm. like they don't, that, that style seems to have dropped away. And even your stuff seems to be leaning increasingly towards education, yeah. even outside of fitness. Is that but a I feel like that is what YouTube is becoming. It's becoming more of a platform for education. Like you said, there is, there, there is always going to be room for those uh, vloggers and lifestyle people like Jesse James. He's smashing it at the He's moment. He's absolutely fucking destroying but, it. Yeah. There's only very few people who can do that. And maybe this, I feel like it's, it's one of those things where people have seen everything. True. It's hard to reinvent be unique. Something. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.